Well, hello, it is Pittsburgh Sports Live. Hello, I'm Dan Kangerski. Uh, hopefully we can get through this. Uh, there's a little gremlin we're chasing here. I want to get into uh, Pittsburgh Penguins training camp today. Lots of stuff coming from that this weekend. Pittsburgh Hockey Now, uh, me, Shelly Anderson, all over it this weekend. And what I really want to get into, Kessel and Malkin spoke on Sunday. We've got a couple highlights from that I think you really need to see. Phil Kessel's smile when we asked him about the fan backlash on the media. Before uh, beat writer extraordinaire Jonathan Bomboli even finished the sentence, in fact, as soon as uh, Jonathan started the sentence, Kessel's face, it, it, it just, it, this big Cheshire cat grin, you know, you know, Kessel's really happy smile. Uh, he, he let it loose. He knew what we went through. <laughs> he might not care or he might not admit. I'm sure he watched uh, a lot of you take it out on us with a, a little bit of uh, delight and glee. We also talked with Evgeny Malkin. We've got more on Matt Cullen. Penguins lines are set for tonight against uh, the Buffalo Sabres. We'll get into that here in just a couple seconds. Let's, uh, well, I, I guess I'll hold the Steelers stuff till late in the show. Antonio Brown just decides, eh, I'm not coming to work on Monday. <coughs> hey, boss, I got the flu. Yeah, what a day. So uh, tonight in uh, Buffalo, the Penguins' lines will be Jake Gensel on the left, Derek Grant in the center, Daniel Sprung on the right side. The second line, I think, is Teddy Bluger in the middle with Thomas DePauli on the left and uh, Jimmy Hayes on the right side. In a little bit of a, an odd switch, and this is why I, I guess we can't read too much into training camp lines, because Zach Aston reese and we've got some uh, sound from him. I, I had a chance to talk with him one-on-one -on -one in the Penguins locker room on Saturday. He's been playing left wing to Evgeny Malkin in the first uh, three or four days of camp. Well, tonight he'll be on the right side of Jordi Bellarive and Dominic Simone. So I guess this is why the first couple games of the hockey preseason are, are just essentially bunk. I asked Jacques Martin. I, I was curious because I, I would kind of try to get some combinations that you know or that you want to see together as soon as possible. Let them really start to, to work on a few reps. But uh, Martin, who is, is the, I don't want to say interim head coach, but he's uh, handling the fort while Mike Sullivan deals with uh, the loss of his father and Pittsburgh Hockey Now and all of us uh, here at Pittsburgh Sports Live certainly send our condolences, prayers, and strength to the Sullivan family. Martin is handling things in the interim. And he said, after the second preseason game, then you're going to see a bit more legitimate defensive combinations and, and a bit more in way of the lines. So... Um, ZAR goes from left wing to right wing tonight. JS Day will center the third line. Garrett Wilson, career minor leaguer on the left side. Anthony Angelo, an interesting prospect, will be on the right of uh, that line. And what I, I, I guess we'll, we'll get straight to, uh, to Malkin and Kessel. You know, best friends, sing along with me. <laughs> Here they are just sucking wind after some uh, conditioning. That was uh, kind of uh, funny to watch because first Kessel went down and then Malkin went down. Uh, they were skating pretty hard. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't an easy drill after the scrimmage when those two needed some air. Uh, it looks like they're going to be together, though. The Penguins have created a couple bedrock combinations to start camp. Gensel with Crosby, Malkin with Kessel, and if Derek Broussard were not ill, he would have been with Patrick Hornquist at the start of camp. But let me show you here. You get a little taste of Phil Kessel in the locker room on Sunday. And just wait till about 30 seconds in. Watch the grin from Phil You're Kessel. You're the kind of guy who likes to be out there every single night. But that you also could probably look at the other side and say there might be a benefit to rest down the stretch. How do you balance that in your mind? I always play, so right. you know, whenever I can play, uh, I'm going to be out there. I don't think it you know, makes that much of a difference. 
Phil, were you surprised to see some of the talk about there being a problem between you and Sully? What was your side of that? You know, I think some people make issues that aren't there, and, you know, uh, it is what it is. I know, I could probably speak for everybody. When we would write something about, like, maybe there's an issue with Sully, or maybe the Penguins might trade Phil, we get crushed with emails and tweets and everything from fans. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And I wonder, could you sort of talk see about it? the fan support you've gotten here in yeah, Pittsburgh? Yeah, the fans have been great to me the, uh, um, my years here, and, you know, uh, we've had some good years here, so, uh, you know, I love them, and, you know, they've always been supportive, and they're great fans here. Did you see the smile? <laughs> Oh, Phil knew he had us. Maybe in 10 or 15 years. One of us who uh, who knows what went on this summer and last May. Maybe one of us will tell the story in a book someday. Who talked, who didn't talk. Um, was it really uh, friction? I guess we don't want to relive that now. But suffice it to say... The only thing I think I take umbrage over are the, the few people who say we all made it up. If you think we colluded with some of the people who absolutely hate us to put out the same story, yeek. You know. You know how that goes. But uh, bygones, you can forgive, I can forgive, and we'll all uh, move on. Kessel. Uh, <laughs> Genny Malkin has also had a, a pretty strong camp, at least in terms of getting his teeth put back in his mouth. And here's where a couple stories collide. Because Malkin and Kessel, uh, obviously getting their chemistry back. I loved when uh, Malkin, let me see if I can pull it up here. It is on uh, Pittsburgh Hockey Now, part of our PHN Extra package. Malkin just was uh, blunt honest. Yeah, the coach was a little bit upset with us, meaning... Malkin and Castle. The, Mike Sullivan was upset with how they played in the defensive zone, with uh, that they passed too much, that they were allowing more goals, that there was just a lot of things that pair needed to improve. And it was nice to hear uh, Malkin admit that. It was something that we've known, we've, we've hinted at, we've, we've kind of proffered that and, and put it out there. I know a lot of us have. And now that Malkin said it, uh, I guess it's officially on the the record now that Sullivan wanted uh, a good bit more out of them. So Malkin had uh, took a high stick, I th we think, from Bellarive in the unofficial workouts, or maybe it was someone else before training camp started. And then on Saturday, a couple minutes in, Malkin takes a high stick from Matt Cullen, of all people. And I'll tell you what, Matt Cullen has had. A camp. He has shown more hop, more fire, more intensity in training camp, I think, than, than everyone else. Part of that, obviously, is excitement to be back. But he's also, let me give you, a, this is just my interpretation of it, he's reestablishing himself in that locker room, is Matt Cullen. He is saying, boys, I'm back. We're not going to go through cruise control through January or February. We're all going to be held accountable. That includes me. Here we go. On Sunday morning, you know, the bright and early Sunday morning, 9 a.m. practice. Yeah, I, I was there. And Matt Cullen was in the battle drill. And a, a stick tap started. There's... 26, uh, you know, there's however many guys are on uh, one team, 24, 20, I think 24 are on team three in, in training camp. And as, as the drill went on, guys were realizing how hard Cullen was working in this battle. Now, it wasn't, I think it was on Zach Trotman. Perhaps it was Chris Summers, uh, you know, a couple of Wilkes-Barre guys, but regardless, as Cullen finished the drill and skated back to the red line for all he was worth, the entire team stick-tapped dad. And that's why um, we had this today. Dad. Showing the kids that he still has it. And if uh, you haven't, uh, definitely check out PittsburghHockeyNow.com. 
he, he really has shown some fire and jump in his step. I think he's the left winger on that fourth line, although we don't know because Derek Broussard is still out with illness. Riley Sheehan is day-to-day uh, with an upper body injury. So Matt Cullen could well begin the season depending on, on the severity of, of Sheehan's injury. I, I think eventually, though, he's the left winger. And I had a chance to t- kind of pick his brain uh, about that because I was under the impression, I, I assumed incorrectly, uh, that center would be more taxing, more demanding on a 42-year-old body than would a left wing. But Cullen set me straight a little bit, N- not angrily or anything, uh, uh, of course, but he said, no, 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 uh, left wing you can concentrate more on offense. And there's a whole different skating to that. Well, obviously, center, you have to come back to the end wall. You play the full 200 feet. And left wing, you get to focus on the offense. But he didn't think it was any less demanding or or less taxing. So I guess my theory there is a little bit out the window. I I think Cullen has better offensive instincts in that left side, better hands, certainly better feet than Riley Shane over there. So if Dominic Simone is your fourth line right wing, or if Zach Aston Reese is the guy, Jimmy Hayes, whoever it might be, uh, that, that's going to be a very formidable fourth line. In fact, it's going to be a great fourth line for the, the, the Penguins. I, I wish I had more insight to you on uh, what the lines will look like to start the season. But because it's been a little bit of a jumbled mess because of the illness and injuries, we really have only seen the, the Penguins' top two centers in action. The one, uh, I guess the three pairings, that I, I can tell you we'll see are Gensel, Crosby, Malkin, and Kessel, Brassard, and Hornquist. Brian Rust uh, could be the left wing on Malkin's line if they slide Haglin uh, down to that third line with Brassard and Hornquist. Oh, what a line that would be. You, you've seen Haglin and Hornquist uh, raise up Nick Benino's game. Boy, imagine what they could do for a guy like Derek Brassard, who's already... Uh, one of the the better centers in the National Hockey League. That could be just uh, scary, scary (laughs) good. And then, uh, obviously, I think the the right wing on Sidney Crosby's line is still a little bit undecided. Daniel Sprong has started camp there. He's been very good, at least in the offensive zone. What I've seen from him, and and here's what I, I, the, the best breakdown I can give you, is what I've seen Sprong doing is thinking, but it hasn't necessarily hindered him in that sense. He's been finding the soft spots away from the play to get open, to get that shot off, to, to make the next play. He's been slipping away from defenders. And uh, he set Sidney Crosby up on uh, on Friday with just a glorious chance right in front of the net because he slipped away from his defender. Nice little touch pass to a cutting Crosby. And Crosby, uh, maybe maybe it was a little too hard, uh, but Sprong didn't dare, and I asked, didn't dare chirp chirp Crosby about it. Now, I did ask uh, Sid specifically about Daniel Sprong. And this is one of those times when print and broadcast tell two different stories, right? In print, Crosby's words were that Sprong was much more confident and assertive. Broadcast be a a little different. And I I want you to watch it first, and then you tell me what you make of Crosby's reaction. I mean, it's a few days. No, it's not your job. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think it's a few days of scrimmage, and he looks pretty confident out there. You can see when guys have got a few, you know, a few camps under their belt, they get more confidence and a little more assertive. So I think, uh, I think I can see that just from, you know, him playing some games and um, being a little more comfortable. But uh, that's probably the, the biggest thing that I notice. So, did you catch that big smile? I don't know if Sid was laughing at my question. Like, oh man, you rube. Why would you ask that? 
I don't know if he was laughing because he didn't want to give uh, an answer. Like, you know, don't ask a player uh, about that. Or if he was kind of giving a, a smile like, boy, I can tell you don't know what you're talking about. Otherwise, you wouldn't ask that question. Entirely up to you how you read Sid's reaction there. Um, I, I tend to think that there are obviously were a few flaws in, in Sprong's game. Maybe I was uh, jumping the gun by asking the question. That's kind of what I gleaned from it, but I, I wanted to show it to you so you uh, could make your own mind up on that. And I, I hope you, in fact, you know what, in the comments section, feel free uh, here, you're watching the video, drop, drop me a line and let me know uh, what you thought Sid's reaction was. Uh, maybe you thought of something that, uh, that I didn't. So we've, we've rolled through Malkin, Kessel, Sid, uh, and, uh, Cros and Sprung, rather. Another guy who's interesting in this camp is Zach Aston Reese. Just got on solid foods in middle of August. He looks a little skinnier to me, although that's a disputed opinion amongst uh, the people who covered training camp. I think I was in the minority on that, just full disclosure. Um, he doesn't view the early assignment on Malkin's left wing in training camp as a, just a, a blank audition to make the team. Uh, I, I think uh, he, like I, saw that as an opportunity for... Aston Reese to actually earn that left wing. I think right now it's getting my hands back. Um, there was a few times where I felt the pass or um, kind of got the, the puck taken away from me. And uh, that's the whole thing about playing at this level is not having that happen at all. Uh, that's kind of kind of the purpose of being here. But um, no, I'm feeling better as the games go on and, and getting my lungs back and. Um, you know, I feel like I'm right there. Well, you're getting a pretty big opportunity. You're playing beside Malkin. Do you think is that um, they communicated to you that that's uh, where you could start the season? Um, nothing was said. Um, I think it's kind of more actions than words kind of thing. Um, I think they're giving me an opportunity based off based off of last year. Um, you know, it's a good opportunity, and uh, you know, it's been it's been good so far. So uh, there you go. It's more actions than words. I, I always find the communication between coaches and players at all points of the season to be very fascinating. I, I like to, to ask the guys, have they said you know, anything about this to you or, or about that to you? Some guys just don't, don't want to get into it for, for good reasons. Other guys will, will tell you straight up if they have or, or not. So um, I, I think we might have just stopped. Uh, I apologize if we have. It's, it's, it's an incredible deal uh, to me. When I, you know, as a player, I'd be like, hey, coach, what's, what's this mean? What's that mean? But I, I guess that's, uh, <laughs> that, that's not the hockey way. And, uh, yeah, I guess we have stopped broadcasting live, but you can uh, watch the, the full video uh, a little bit uh, back to unless you're watching it live you'll, you'll get to see the uh, the recorded deal just a, a weird uh, technical technologic technology day I can speak uh-huh see I got the vest on by the way too what do you think I'm becoming the, the vest guy uh, I think Th there's a fine line between when you, when you wear a vest, fine line between being the 3 a.m. blackjack dealer living out of the trailer in Laughlin and being the, uh, the, the preppy, douchey boyfriend in every Lifetime movie who doesn't quite appreciate the girl's frumpy sense of style and her six cats before she finds love that was in front of her all along in, in the guy washing her car and running all of her errands for her. You can tell I think highly of Lifetime movies and the Hallmark Channel. I mean, thank God for the Hallmark Channel, right? Otherwise, what would Jennifer Love Hewitt do for, for a, a living? Let, let's get to the Steelers here before uh, we wrap things uh, up. Antonio Brown doesn't show up for camp, or I mean uh, practice today. Per Ed Bouchette on Twitter, this will be a developing story. What just a ridiculous... 
ridiculous implosion of this team. It does remind me a, a bit of the uh, turn of the century Steelers, turn of the 21st century. Uh, you know, w- when, when everything just hit the fan, kind of uh, later in Bill Cowher's tenure, before they had that Super Bowl run against the, the Patriots, when there was the whole Kent Graham, Cordell Stewart stuff, and horrible, vicious rumors were flying around town, people calling for Bill Cowher's job. The Steelers were talented, but not putting rubber to the road a few 8-8 eight and eight seasons, missed the playoffs, and everybody was just up in arms. And Mike Tomlin has this great record, but there's no sense that the Steelers are a disciplined, cohesive unit. Levy, uh, Le'Veon Bell situation, and um, I'll show you something here on that in, in just a second, too. Brown f- blows up on the sideline. You saw Ben Roethlisberger shooing him away, come, coming to the huddle late in the game. At some point... Don't the, the, the Steelers kind of put their foot down on some of these guys? And at some point, don't you have to take a step back to take a step forward? Because let me tell you something. The Steelers could very well be out of the playoff race, out of the wild card chase in the next three or four weeks. It could get ugly around here, especially if Tampa Bay hangs four, five, six touchdowns on them. If Ryan Fitzpatrick, who what's he have, eight, nine touchdowns this season? If Fitzpatrick just uh, torches the Steelers and they lose that game on national TV, oh, it's going to be really ugly. And then you've got this stuff tearing apart the locker room. Maybe. Maybe not. Okay. Uh, the I know I have some Le'Veon Bell stuff. Nope, not going to get it. Let's try that. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, sorry. Um, Yeah, Le'Veon Bell on a jet ski as TMZ yells, pay him his money. It's like, ah, TMZ sports, you got to be smarter than that. Even I know, and I'm usually a week behind uh, learning this stuff, the Steelers can't pay him any more than than what they've already uh, put on the table. It's take the franchise tag or don't and come back next year and do it or report in week 9 or 10 and get your service time in so that the the year counts. Let me say this very sternly and, and boldly. If I were the Steelers, I wouldn't let Bell report. I, I, there are some loopholes in which they can make him inactive, which can wipe out this entire year. Or they they can make his life miserable. They can uh, not activate him for some games. And then put themselves in the driver's seat. And that's exactly what I would do. I wouldn't play hardball here. I'd play beanball. When you offer a guy, they offered him well more than $14.5 million. And... And he, he, he just kept playing. I think he, uh, he had his sights set on 2019 the entire time. And so if I were the Steelers, I, I'd, uh, I'd make an example of him. And by if they can find a way to just whitewash this year, and by the way, if they're out of the wild card chase, if they're, let's say, three and six, do you really uh, need Bell to try to rally to go 8-8? Eight and eight? No. You suck it up. You take your high draft pick. And then in the offseason, and forgive me if I'm speaking incorrectly here, doesn't this situation start all over again with the, the franchise tag or negotiations because he didn't play this season? Now, you might correct me on, on that. I, like I said, I'm a hockey guy, and even some of the uh, finer points of the NHL CBA confound me because the lawyers just drive me nuts. So that's going to re- do it uh, here. We've uh, <laughs> Thanks for hanging with us. It, it's been uh, a weird, weird little, 
little show. Uh, check out all of the uh, training camp videos on the Pittsburgh Sports Live YouTube page. Check out PHN Extra as well. Just a, a few bucks a month gets you all of the extra hockey content. A lot of the stuff that no one else had. I, we were hitting the locker room doing one-on-one -on -one interviews like uh, with Zach Aston, Reese, and, and Matt Cullen. Um, didn't get one-on-one -on -one with Malkin or Kessel. We were all swarming that one. But Justin Schultz uh, as well. So we will talk again next week. Tomorrow, uh, Mike Asti will be uh, here in the big chair. On Thursday, it's Mike Pakovkan. On Friday, it's the Friday Football Show with Alan Saunders. Until we talk again, kids, have fun. <laughs>